Welcome to Digital Asset News, taking top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. So today we've got two pieces of information I think is pretty important. First up, this is coming to us from Stansberry Research and the title is Ethereum over Bitcoin. The price is headed to 10,000, says Frank Holmes. And we're going to take a look at uh, why he thinks that and uh, surprise, it's all related to the CME futures that is going to be launching uh, very soon. So we'll take a look at that. And also, the GameStop mania may not have been the retail trader rebellion it was perceived to be data shows. And what this is really concerning to me is, is if all these different hedge funds and big time money players are really getting into these uh, manipulation type of markets, which we know they do, what does this mean for cryptocurrency digital assets? Well, I can tell you right now, it doesn't look good. So we'll go over those two things, but first take a look at what's going on in the market. So today it is ugh, Friday, February 5th, about 11 a.m. El Paso, Texas time. Let me blow this up so everybody can see this. I think this might actually help us out. Ah, there we go. So what do we have? What is going on? Well, let me tell you right now, it's looking okay. We've got uh, Bitcoin. Looks like it's uh, almost at 30. Geez, almost at 38,000. It's pretty good. Up 2%. Ethereum's up 4. And uh, this is the big one we're going to talk about. Even though Ethereum is up uh, you know, pretty well because of these futures contracts which are, which are coming on the pipe, I just don't think it's going to be good. And I'm going to show you some historical data which could prove my point. XRP is up 6%. Uh, ooh, hey, Cardano. Cardano is up massively. Um, they are looking at 50 cents. Remember that Cardano's all-time high was around a dollar 13, dollar 14, somewhere around there. So we will see what's going on. But um, eh, it's it's looking good for Cardano. I hope it actually all works out. I know there were some different things. I mean, now they just transferred over to uh, Gogan for smart contracts. So uh, we'll see how it all how it all goes and goes off without a hitch. I will say this though. When they went over from their uh, test net to their mainnet launch, really no hiccups. They really were drilling it into those guys and uh, they've been doing some pretty good work. Even though it takes a lot of time, when they do things, it actually works. And that's what I like to see. Litecoin up 3%, Binance coin 12%. Probably for, uh, if you watch the video from yesterday, we uh, took, took a look in detail about uh, MicroStrategy seminar. And one of the, uh, it was uh, Mr. Quack from Binance, head of institutional development. And he was talking about all the different projects that they have coming on, about their, their credit cards, their, their debit cards, their different projects that they, I mean, everything that they're doing, uh, maybe that could actually uh, rise up the price. Remember, if, if you have a token such as Binance Coin that actually does stuff and has utility, of course it's gonna go up. That's why uh, I should've got into it a long time ago, but I didn't. But uh, Jesus was at 45 bucks, now it's at $61, look at that. I mean, that's over time, so that's pretty good. Uh, let's see, 4%, EOS, nobody cares. 12%, 32% for Cosmos. I think there was a new listing uh, for Cosmos, which uh, probably jumped it up. Also, I think that uh, Cosmos was also going to be included into uh, one of the Grayscale trusts, along with uh, Theta, potentially, and some other, uh, other big ones. Uh, I think it was... Uh, uh, Monero, privacy coin, kind of crazy, huh? So yeah, synthetics up 12%. Again, the DeFi stuff, pretty good. All right, so <clears throat> it's a pretty good day overall. Uh, market cap looks to be over, uh, I think we're hitting uh, 1, 1. 1.2 trillion almost, so we're not too bad. If you notice, this is uh, trade the chain. What I like about this one is this part right here, the projected range. So I'm gonna click on this to see exactly one of the highest ones. And what this does, Again, it cr crawls all the internets, uh, the blog posts, and uh, direct API to Twitter. And let's just see what's going on. What could potentially pop in the next hour? Because I like this because it gives us like a it's a 90% uh, uh, positivity or uh, accuracy. Elrond Gold uh, looks like it's has a negative three to four. Aragon, anything great? What's this one? Nexo. Nexo just did something with with its token and its uh, loyalty program. So I think this is why there's a big jump, but there's a big wide variance here, negative eight to plus eight. If I was a trader, I'd take a gamble on that. I'm not a trader. Uh, I do very little, like around 2% of my entire portfolio, but uh, I'm learning, it's, uh, it's, it is kind of fun. It's kind of like gambling, let's just be honest. Harvest Financial, oh, another farm one. This one could be another one, but again, they don't have a tweet volume there, so I don't know. Anyhow, if you want to take a look at that more in detail, there's a link in the description. Let's just jump into today's top story, huh? So this is, this is what I really want to talk about. Let me switch back real quick. So this article, this was from Stansberry Research. That is uh, Daniela Cambone. 
and uh, she's got Frank Holmes. He's the founder of uh, U.S. Global Investors. And the reason why it was interesting to me is because, well, first of all, uh, he had my exact same Ethereum prediction, which is 10,000, so I like that guy. Uh, but honestly, though, uh, the reason why he had it uh, was kind of concerning. And I'm not going to play any of the video because it's very long and drawn out stuff. So I'm going to give you the highlights so we can get the heck out of here. So let me just cl close back real quick. So just so you know, Frank here, blah, 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 he is the chairman of Hive Blockchain. So in case you don't know him, it's, the, it's a mining company. It uh, produces Ethereum and Bitcoin together. So probably doing pretty well for himself. So that part is pretty good. The thing, though, is that Frank said, he goes, the reason why it's going to go up to 10,000 is because you have to understand that the, that the CME, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, uh, next week is going to launch futures contracts. He goes, because of that, you know, the institutions that get to play and do all the things that they want to do and they're used to these types of things, that means that the price will definitely, definitely go up. And I got to tell you, I just don't see that happening. And I'm going to lay this information out. I'm going to ask you the question uh, so you can make, make your best judgment. So real quick. The futures contract for Ether or Ethereum is coming February 8th. So what did, we, what did I say? February 5th. So we're looking at, uh, what, on Monday. That could be a reason why the price is going up. However, I want to stress something. And that is, and we've talked about this before. So the CME did this with Bitcoin in 2017. And I was around and it was going from right here on the 15th of December. It was going to launch in three days on the 18th. So right here, you were looking at, it was at the all-time high, almost 20,000. And I know a lot of people had some uh, limit orders in there to sell at 20K because they're like, you know what? 20K is a stepping stone. Everybody was talking about 50,000, 75,000. And of course, Crazy McAfee was like, going to a million, sir. So, I mean, these types of things were like not uncommon. And I was, just, and I was this, is my first, this was my first rodeo, honestly. And I was like, it'll never go down. So... What happened was, that was the 15th of December. Then we take a look at the 16th. Okay, a little bit of a drop, no big deal. Then we get to the 17th, 19.1. Still not a big deal because, I mean, it's a little volatile. We had just seen like $1,000 days. that Like it was nothing. And then once we hit it on the 18th of December, when we did the futures, all of a sudden it dropped 1,000. We're like, what the heck? It went from 19.1 to 18.1. What's going on? And then just a couple of days later, you're at 14,000. And then you can see what happens here. A little bit up and down, but it crashed and never recovered uh, until 2021. Here we are. Or actually 2020, excuse me, until the end, end of, the, end of the, the year. So the question really becomes is, did smart money get in there and go, look, there's no infrastructure. We don't know what's going on. This is just dumb money and retail in here. So we're just going to short it. We're just going to short the market. We're going to manipulate as best we can because you have to remember, we never even touched one trillion. I think the highest we went was 860 billion for that market cap. So they could do whatever they wanted to in this uh, this little this little pond, and they you know did what they wanted to do. Do you think that was the case, or do you think it was just a natural part of the uh, four-year cycle, like I always talk about? You know, you have the, uh, the having all-time high, monster dip, and then a, a, a reset. So it could be one of those two things. I think they both played a, a hand. Now the question becomes this. Because all these new institutions are here, because you've got the mass mutuals and the micro strategies and the Galaxy Digital and all these big places, and they all want Bitcoin. That's the big thing. They all want Bitcoin. Some places, like the hedge funds, you know, the gamblers, they want altcoins. So the question then becomes... Well, first of all, MicroStrategy is not holding Ethereum. Mass Mutual isn't holding that. Galaxy Digital is, uh, that is true. But other, other big companies that are coming into the, the play or into the field, MicroStrategy just had a seminar just a couple of days ago, actually yesterday. And they all talked about like, hey, this is, we're going to tell you it's all about Bitcoin. And that is it. That's all they, they, they want to do. So will Ethereum be that? Remains to be seen. Let me blow this up real quick so you can see. Oops, not me. <laughs> so this part right here. So again, I think that is a pretty big dip uh, as far as like what could potentially happen. Let me know what you think in the comment section. I am very hesitant to buy any type of, a, uh, of, of Ethereum right now because I don't know which way it's going to go. It could blast off the moon. It could fall sharply. But this is why I dollar cost average. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Let's move on to our next piece. All right, let, me, let me bring it right back there.
All right, so the next piece, this, this one is interesting because everything that we heard about GameStop, uh, about what happened, you know, uh, if you're not familiar with it, you lived under a rock, so this is what was going on. So GameStop was being shorted by a bunch of hedge funds. Uh, some people on Reddit said, we're going to stop that, and they just bought it like crazy. And then uh, Robinhood said, oh, stop all that. We're not going to let you do it, and they pretty much shut the whole thing off, and you can only sell. It was a big bummer, but... Uh, it was just an interesting piece because I'm like, oh, that's great. You know, uh, the, the people, the small and the downtrodden stand up to the uh, persecution of the, uh, of the large entity players and really stick it to them. Well, looks like that almost wasn't the case. So GameStop, first of all, article from CNBC, it states GameStop was not in the top 10 most bought names by retail investors last month, according to JP Morgan. So this was a look at the list of the 10 most purchased stocks by retail traders during the market mania last month, and it's missing one, which is uh, GameStop. So they've got Apple, Micro Devices, Tesla, AMC, AMC, that one was one of those, General Motors, Facebook, Microsoft, Google, Overrides. So the same types of uh, stocks you would expect to be picked up by, by retail and even big businesses as well, because, I mean, these are pretty good ones. Coca-Cola has been a, a staple. Microsoft is uh, part of, well, Facebook, uh, Facebook, Microsoft, Apple, Google, Amazon, uh, those are like, you know, the big ones. So, of course, the, they would also be picked up by retail. But here's the thing. The prevailing narrative was that a band of Reddit-inspired small traders rose up against Wall Street, bought GameStop a mask, and then they got, you know, losses. Great. But several signs are pointing to institutional investors as big drivers of the wild price action on the way up. So, again... We always think to ourselves, oh, you know, cryptocurrency is such a small market and there's so much manipulation. Well, it happens everywhere. And there's maybe not manipulation per se, but I think the big people, the big hedge funds who have data at their fingertips and they can pull out any kind of information that they want to, can take a look back and go, what's the best play here? We've got a lot of people who don't know really what they're doing. They just saw something on Reddit and they're buying GameStop like crazy. Maybe we should get on top of that because it's a short squeeze, write it up to X amount and then sell like crazy and get out before anybody even realizes it. That's probably what happened. Actually, that is what happened. So it's possible the noise from the crowd caused most to overlook Wall Street uh, co-opting this trade to make a fast buck, <laughs> which is true. And then you got... Uh, this was the big thing. Retail investors were not the sellers of GameStop. So you had, on Monday, it was only 28% uh, of retail. Tuesday, 28, Wednesday, 28, Thursday, 34, and what, the week to Thursday was almost 30%. So who was selling GameStop? Well, New York-based hedge fund SendVest Management reportedly, reportedly made $700 million off of the GameStop mania. That's a pretty good amount in like, Five days, six days. So well played, sir. Tip of the hat. Uh, the Wall Street Journal report of Wednesday. And this is just more data. It's the same thing. But it really just goes to show you that it only makes sense, doesn't it? When you've got big institutions that are just sitting in the, in the wings with a ton of dry powder, with just a ton of money going, where, where do we see opportunities? Okay, well, that GameStop looks pretty good. That AMC is a pretty good play. Oh, there's also this Ethereum futures coming up. Maybe we could do a lot of shorting on that. Depends. Just depends. I'm not saying I know what's going to happen because obviously I don't, I don't have a crystal ball. And I, this is not financial advice. It's just uh, some interesting, lofty questions to be, to be answered uh, at some point. I don't have all the answers, but I can tell you this. It makes me, it makes me concerned enough to not go all in on Ethereum but I never do. This is the beauty of dollar cost averaging. If it goes up, hey, I'm, a, I'm making it because I've been dollar cost averaging for the last three years. And of course, if it goes down, hey, great, I can increase dollar cost averaging and pick up uh, Ethereum at, at, at a discount because I know it's going to go to 10000 at some point. So that's really what it comes down to. Anyhow, uh, let me know what you think in the comment section. And that is it for today's news. So if you made it this far, hey, congratulations, you made it. Why don't you click on the thumbs up? That would really help us out a lot. Also, consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about are time-sensitive, like the things we just talked about right now. And uh, that would really help us out. Really appreciate it. Also, if you like these types of videos, there'll be two more going to pop up on your left and right. Not for sure, but uh, you two do its magic. And uh, that is it for today. So thanks so much for watching. Appreciate it. I'll see you on the next one.